Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a very simple Angular 2 component. All right, so we have a fresh quick start application up and running, and this is the app.component.ts file. And you can see this is very simple. We're importing the main component package, and then we have this at component. This is called a decorator, which allows us to attach metadata to our component. Okay, so we have a selector. This is whatever you want the custom directive to be, which is my app here. We also have a template, which is the content, which is in this case is just a, an H1. And then we have the main class for the component. So what we're going to do is create our own. So we're going to go in the app folder and say new file. And let's just call this my dash component dot TS. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not right. We want my dash component dot component dot TS. Okay, that's the, the convention. All right, so what we'll do is import uh, components, and that's going to be from Angular 2 slash core. All right, so next thing we want to do is create the decorator. So we're going to say at component and that's going to take in an object. We'll define our selector. Okay, we're just going to say my dash component and then the template. We'll just put in an H1 and we'll say my component And then down here, we'll create the class. So we're going to say export class my component. OK, so what we'll do is let's save this. Now, in order for this to work, we need to import it into the main app component. What's this? I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I don't see anything wrong. Anyway, so let's go to app.component.ts and we're just going to import. We're going to import my component. OK, what you want to put here is whatever you name the class. OK, whatever that is. And that's going to be from dot slash my component dot component. OK. Now, remember the selector is my dash component, so we're going to use that in here. We're just going to insert it. All right, now if we save that and we take a look, you can see that nothing's showing up for our component. The reason for that is when we use a custom directive like this, we have to, uh, we have to define it. So we're going to put a comma here, and then we're going to say, directives and that's going to be an array and you want to put your class name in there which is my component save that and now if we go back uh, why is that not working let's take a look at the console uh, no directive annotation found in my component all right so something's up with this Oh, you know what? It's that semicolon. That's not that shouldn't be there. There we go. All right. So now you can see that our component is now showing. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to create a property. All right. So what we'll do is let's create a property called title. OK, we're going to put that there and we can we can um, cast this as private or public. I'm going to click say private. Okay, because we don't want to access it from outside of the class. Now to add some, add a value to that, we'll put that in our constructor. So a constructor, if you don't know, that is a function or a method that's going to run when the component runs or when the component's created. All right, so what we'll do is we'll say this dot title and we're going to set that to hello world. All right. Now, in order to use that, we need to bind it to our template. And there's a few ways that we can do that. OK, 
Okay, so the easiest way I think is to use interpolation, which is just a double curly brace, and then we can say title. All right, so let's run that, and now you can see that we're getting hello world. So that's one way to bind the data. Another way is to use property binding. So for instance, let's say we have an image link. Okay, so we'll say private image link, and let's set that to, actually, we're not going to set it there. Let's set it down in the constructor. So let's see, lorem pixel dot com, we'll say slash 400 slash 200. All right, so that's an image link. Now we want to bind that to uh, the SD source attribute in an image tag. All right, so let's put in image and then to bind it, we're going to use uh, these brackets and the attribute we want is source and then we're going to set that to image link. All right, so let's save that, check it out and we get an image. All right, and the way that this service works, it just sends a different image each time you reload. All right, so that's another way. Another way we can do it is to use the bind and then whatever the target. So in this case, we could actually do bind and then source. And that should work. Okay, so there's a few different ways to do it. Now, with the template, you're probably going to um, you're going to compile you're going to pile up some code here, some HTML and some variables and so forth. So what you want to do is you want to be able to have multiple lines. All right. But if we do that the way it's set up now, it's just going to break on us. All right. We can, of course, concatenate. We can put quotes and plus signs and all that. But um, TypeScript and the ES6 syntax allow us to uh, use backticks here instead of quotes. So I'm going to put a backtick here and also right here. All right. And now you can see that we can actually go on multiple lines. OK, not only multiple lines, but we can easily insert dynamic variables right in the template string. All right. So that's a, a big help. It's a, a, a real nice uh, addition to the ES6 syntax. Save it. Let's make sure it still works, which it does. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how to bind data the opposite way. So in this case, with our interpolation and property bindings, uh, we were binding data. Whoops. We were binding data from the uh, from the class to the view or the template. Uh, now, if we want to, let's say, call a function from inside the component from the template, we can do that as well. So what I'll do here is let's put a line break and then we'll put a button. Okay, so we have a button and let's say we want to run a function when this button's clicked. So to do that, we're going to use parentheses. All right. Remember, we used brackets. Let me put this back to just regular property binding. You can see we have brackets. Okay, those symbolize bind, binding the data from the view to the component. In this case, we're going. I'm sorry, from the component to the view. In this case, we're going to the view or to the template. All right, so we need we use parentheses. So in here, we want to put some kind of event. So let's say click, and then we want to set that equal to a function. Uh, we'll say I don't know. We'll just say run click all right and then down here under the constructor we'll create a function called run click and let's just do console.log and we'll say you clicked okay save that and now if I click this button down here you can see it says you clicked all right so that's how we can handle events from our template now, if you know Angular 1, you know that it was uh, one of the big advantages was the easy two way data binding. All right. So we also have that still available, even though we have these two different methods of binding data each way. We can also do two way data binding. All right. And you used ng model in Angular 1 and we still have ng model. It's just used in a little bit of a different way. All right. So what I'm going to do here 
is let's put in an input and we'll give it a type of text. All right, now to use ng model, we need to use brackets and parentheses. All right, so notice that when we go um, from the, the data source to the template, we use brackets. When we go from the template to the data source, we use parentheses. So ng model is two way data binding, so we're using both. All right, so let's say ng model and let's set this to. Um, note we'll set it to note all right and then down here let's put in private note and here we'll just say this dot note I'm not going to define it I'm not going to set it to anything and then up here right underneath let's put in our double curly braces and note all right so what this should do is it should bind data both ways in and out so let's save that. Okay, if I start typing in this uh, input box, you can see that it's also coming out here. All right, so that's how we can do two way data binding. Now, let's say we wanted to uh, also bind an event, we could do that. Oops. So let's use key up and we'll set that to a function called say something. All right, and then here we'll pass in dollar sign event. So down here, let's create a function called say something. And that's going to take in the event. And then we'll do console.log e dot target dot value. All right, save it. And now when I start typing, you can see down in the console, it logs every time I push a key in, every time I key up. Now, you may want that functionality. You may not. You may want it um, just to go through when you click enter. So what you could do is instead of key up, you'll do key up dot enter. And now as I'm typing, you can't see it. But when I click enter, it goes through. All right. So that's functionality that you might want to use. All right, so that covers components and data binding. Now for each section of this series, I'm going to uh, save the code and I'm going to upload it uh, all together in a GitHub repository and that should be in the description. All right, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part.